Amen. Would you like to greet the people around you? Christ has risen today. Would you like to be seated? Well, a blessed Easter to everybody this morning. And what a beautiful setting for us to be able to come and to share together. Well, as we were singing our first bit of worship, I was standing right at the back up there. And I saw way down over there, just beyond the geese, there were little rabbits hopping away. <laughs> and so Jay's going to come and tell us about that little rabbit that was hopping away. Morning, everybody. Morning, Jay. I have to sound like a pizza. Hello. So let me put my glasses on so I can see. Oh, we do have some children out there. Some little ones and some very big ones, I think, too, hey? Well, they'll become big little children when they know there's some Easter eggs of the bunny left behind. So, today our story, who can tell me what is today? Can the children shout to me? Easter! Easter, that's right! Now, my little Easter story has got, got, got a nice little thing. I've got two little Easter eggs over here. Okay, what do you think is going to be inside one of them? I think you need to come forward so I can hear you because I'm also going deaf. Can you come forward here? Come over here. Come over here so you can see clearly. All the children. Come. Come, come, come. Yeah, what? No, everybody will come. All the big children will come. Hello, brave boy. Hello. So, come on, come on. Come. So, what do you think is inside you? An Easter egg. Okay, let's open it up and see. You're right. Look at that surprise. I'm a bit surprised. I was expecting a toy or something. Hey, well done to you. Okay, but our story today is going to be about something a little bit different. It's not going to be the surprise that was inside the Easter egg. It's going to be what was not in the Easter egg. Okay, so now I want you to help me tell the story. Can you do that? Hey, can't take this off here, can I? Can I? Sorry. Yeah, they just can't go too far. Alright, so now I want you to help me with this story, alright? Because on the Sunday, after Jesus had been crucified, they went towards Mary Magdalene and other men went towards the, the, the tomb, hey? And what did they see? They saw it's empty, hey? Yeah, just like this Easter egg, all empty, and Jesus had risen. So now every time I say the name Jesus, I want you to say, he is risen. Got that? Okay, even if the children were too shy to come over here, okay, when I say the word Jesus in my story, you're going to shout, he is risen. Okay, can we try that? Jesus. He is risen. Awesome. Okay. So now, when, <coughs> when Mary and, and the other Mary went towards the tomb, when they arrived, the stone had been gone, and they saw an angel there. And the angel said, don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus. Yes, oh, too slow. Hey? Okay. So now, he was crucified, but he's not there. He has risen just as he said he would. So the two Marys looked in and saw the tomb was empty. There was no Jesus. Yes, mm, okay, you're getting it, you're getting it. So, the two the, the angel had said they must go off and tell all the disciples. So, as they went to tell the disciples, they met Jesus. Okay, so they ran to him and they grabbed him and they worshipped with him. And Jesus oh, said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Now, this is what I call a real Easter surprise. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? As they went to see Jesus, 
in the tomb, he was not there. He was risen. That is why when we see our friends on Easter, we greet them with the same, he is risen. Okay, and our friends, what do they say? He is risen indeed. So I want you to remember that Easter is not just about the Easter bunny that goes hopping around. It's about this empty tomb, the thing that's not inside the Easter egg. Okay, now traditionally Easter eggs were like this. And do you want to open this up for me, Ryan? Hey, can you open it as much? Just peel it, just peel it off, rip it off. Like, like pretend it's Christmas and you're opening your present that you can't wait to get to. Hey? Okay, thank you. What a good job. So now our Easter eggs that we eat at Easter time, I know some of you like those marshmallow ones or the bunny rabbit ones and the ones that are opened up and they've got all nice yummy yummy things inside. But we have our Easter eggs because that reminds us of the empty tube. Ryan, you know what I'm going to ask you to do now, hey? What am I going to ask you to do? <laughs> Eat it! Ay, 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 no. Can you break it for me? Can you break it? Is it too hard? I think you can. Oh, he's a strong boy. And what's inside this Easter egg? Nothing. It's hollow. Just like the tomb. You can have that piece. Well done. And you can also grab some. Look at that. Now we get to eat it. And don't forget, after this service, look out. I've got little little things that are there. Because I kind of saw the bunny hopping just like Peter, Reverend Peter saw. And, and there's some little things. Did you see a real bunny? Oh, okay. You're lucky. And we're going to follow these little signs around. And somewhere in that area over there, but only after the service, okay? Follow the little signs and go look for some Easter eggs. All right. And maybe you're going to get a surprise inside. I don't know. I hope so, hey? Okay, so when I say he is risen, you say he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Okay, thank you, guys. I think that was lousy because there was no egg left here for me. <laughs> I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. What a beautiful statement of what Easter means.
You know, Peter, I think we we didn't plan this properly. I think of some of those places, you know, on special festivals they have special events and people do crazy things. Peter, we should have actually arranged a swim across the dam for this morning. <laughs> So in our home, Easter is always marked when we have lunch at Easter. For pudding, we always have a simnel cake. And a simnel cake is a traditional Easter cake. Now I have to confess, and I know that there are either those who love them or hate them, but I love fruit cake. I grieve the fact that I go to a wedding and there's no fruitcake anymore. And the best part of it, of course, is the marzipan on the top. My absolute favorite. And now a similar cake is actually a rather dismal version of a fruitcake. And it began its popularity um, when you used to have the likes of Downton Abbey and the staff who were in the kitchen used to be able to collect what was left over of the flour that was used for the baking um, in the house. And it obviously was the husks, it was those bits and pieces and they used to store them away and any bits of fruit that was left over that wasn't used in the baking was put away. And at the Easter weekend, the servants used to break, used to bake this form of fruit cake, which is rough because of all the husks, the leftover of the, the fruits, and the best part, and probably why I love it so much, is the middle part is marzipan and the top is iced with marzipan with 11 little marzipan balls to signify the 11 disciples and because those servants in those homes used to have Easter Monday off to go and visit their families they would take this rough fruitcake home for them to be able to celebrate and so we rough it every year with our simnel cake. And last night our simnel cake was uh, baking and that smell was gorgeous. I licked the bowl um, really well. I tried not to pinch the marzipan because I've still got to ice it today with that um, and make the little 11 balls. And depends how much I have eaten of the size of little balls that go on top of that. But it's kind of a rough and a poor version of the glory of a rich fruitcake. And in many ways, for Christ, this moment of his victory was very much like the servant's cake. It was rough. It was not filled with all the splendor and the glory and especially of that day when a Roman conquered and had brought victory, they would ride into the city or the area that was conquered on a white stallion. And as we still know in the Olympics today, they would have that crown that would be a sign of the ultimate victory and of what that meant. 
And as in Christ's birth, so too in the victory of rising from the tomb. It was ordinary. It was in a place that most people would not have been found in the early morning. Because it would have been a scary place. People don't like to go and visit a cemetery when it's dark. And yet, it was there that Christ was to be able to demonstrate the greatest victory that has ever been known. The victory over even death itself. And I love that. Because it reminds me that in fact, Christ brings that victory into the very death of the ordinariness of the most difficult situation that we experience within humanity. The one thing that we cannot control is death. And yet, that is the place where Christ chose to show his glory and his true power, that he would overcome. I always find it strange, and I probably say it every year, that there are so many people who don't follow Good Friday. Because it's just too painful and it's too difficult. Because it's the reality that Christ went to the place of our worst fears of Gethsemane, the place where we suffer the most. And it's there that Christ demonstrates the true glory of God. One of the things I read this year that really struck me, which I had never seen it in this way, was that when Jesus um, came to Lazarus' tomb, and Lazarus was risen from the dead, and as Jesus brought him back to life, Jesus gave the instruction to those who were around him, help take off the grave clothes. Unbind him, because we know that he was wrapped in those grave clothes. And I love that symbol, because in many ways it reminds us that even Lazarus, as he was to rise from the dead, needed help in getting rid of some of the stuff that bound him, some of that that held him back. And yet, when Mary and then the disciples, I don't know about Peter being so old, Peter, but when they came to the tomb, the grave clothes were neatly packed Away. Jesus needed no help in being able to strip off the vestige of death. In his power, he had been able to do that. And just that beautiful symbol of them being neatly folded and put away speaks to us of the power of what Christ did. But ultimately, some of the glory of the story is not just of Jesus, but of those women. Of those women who in the dark set out to go and to minister to Jesus. That it was the courage of those women that were able to give the message that we are sitting right where we are this morning. They were the first ones to run back and to say, He is not here. And the reality and the glory of this Easter, it lies in an empty tomb, but it also lies within us. For we are the ones who need to be the messengers and we need to be the ones who can go and to be the witness 
to be able to say to those around us, Christ has risen in your death, in your struggle, in your circumstances, and in the things that you face. And so whilst we'll all probably be following Jade's little signs over there to follow and to find where the bunny has been, the reality is, is that those women taught us we are the signs that will point to the empty tomb. As, I don't think your eggs are empty that they're going to be finding, but anyway, well they could be, some of them are, is... We are the ones who actually can bring the good news of Easter to others. And so what a special day. That there, in the ordinariness, in the reality of our experience, in the graveyard of our own life, Christ appears. The stone gets rolled away. That within that, there is no more bondage. For Christ has solved it all. There is no help needed to take the vestiges of death. And as it is, there is that need for us to be able to proclaim and to be to others. Christ has risen today. And so may God bless us. And what an incredible moment in our faith. And thank goodness Lent is over. <laughs> Lee, where are you? Those chocolate eggs that we had at Les Mis, you can now eat this morning. <laughs> but what a symbol of all this journey we have been through. It has ended. It is over. And we now point our heads towards Pentecost and to the glory of God that comes to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if the clouds part, to be able to see some more of the sun. And so God bless today on this Easter morning. And so let's stand together and let's proclaim with boldness, Thine be the glory, risen and conquering sun.